His Excellency Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali officially launched the Agriculture and Innovation Entrepreneurship Program, a flagship initiative which he said will stimulate and promote significant economic growth in the lives of young agriculturalists. This massive project, the head of state explained, will see the construction of 25 shade houses being established for the cultivation of three high-value crops, carrots, broccoli and cauliflower. The plan targets former and current students from the University of Guyana, the Guyana School of Agriculture and other budding agriculture entrepreneurs. In the first phase of this initiative, a company named One Guyana will be established and managed by the young agriculturalists. Government plans to provide all the materials to begin the construction of these houses. So Crystal, tell me a little bit about why you got into uh, agriculture at UG. Yes, well, growing up, my grandfather, he does farming part-time, so I've always seen firsthand his love of agriculture and also my dad's love of, ar of agriculture. He's also in the sector as well. Uh -huh. So I've just been surrounded by agriculture and I've grown to love it over the years. So right. that was one of my main reasons. So what do you think about this Shade House initiative um, trying to grow some of these crops that are not really traditionally grown here? They might be grown in small quantities, but mm -hmm. broccoli, cauliflower, carrots, not something that's grown here on a large scale. What do you think about this initiative? I think it's a wonderful initiative. Cauliflower, carrots and broccoli, as you said before, they're not traditionally grown in Guyana. However, that's why we utilize the Shade House technology. It provides a protection against pests, diseases, and also varying temperatures. But to add to that, we are the crops that we're using, the varieties are all heat resistant. Uh -huh. for, for example, broccoli, we'll be using the Letago, the King Green, and the Calabrese variety, which are known to be heat resistant and have also been planted before within this country. Okay, so we're, working, we're doing some work here on the ground. Tell us a bit about this soil composition that we have here. Okay, so we have three parts. One part black sand, paddy, and also chicken litter. Uh -huh. And this is extremely important for the crop. Especially since it's not traditionally grown, we have to give it the best fighting chance. So this composition right here has a lot of organic matter that is nitrogen, phosphorus. So when we use this, the plants will be growing wonderfully. Alright, I'm here talking with Lorraine Singh. Now, Lorraine, um, Crystal told us a bit about what the soil here is comprised of. Now, will you guys be needing to add any fertilizer to this to help build it up? Yes, well, well, in modern agriculture now, you know, we have to add fertilizer to, to almost every crop that we grow if we are going on a commercial scale. Doing inorganic, full inorganic farming, uh, plants tend to grow very slow. And to do that on a commercial base, it, it will be much more work okay. and time. Tell us about the, the shade house environment, temperature control, and how important are those things, especially with crops like these? Okay, so why we choose, why we choose the shade house? That's because we could cultivate crops year-round. No matter what climatic pattern or, or elements of the weather we may have. So let's say um, during the May June we have a lot of rainfall, it will be difficult for us to cultivate outside. So the shade house provides the, the ideal environment for the cultivation of these crops. As an agricultural student, what do you think about this initiative coming out of the president? Well, this is a this this is a great great initiative and I'm very proud to be a part of this and, and this will give a lot of young agriculturists, agriculturists the, the, the encouragement to, to, to go in the field and produce food. Okay Tisha, 
Now, tell us a bit about what will be planted under this shade house here. So this shade house is designated to plant broccoli and cauliflower. We are looking at spacing approximately 18 to 24 inches apart with three rows. We are planting three rows as to maximize on space because the more we plant, the more we reap. No, um, I've been talking to some of your other colleagues. There is special soil um, the shade house will provide um, a, a kind of ability for you to manage temperature and things like that. How important is the spacing that you talked about in relation to planting crops like these? Because they're high value crops, so we want to give them maximum space that they would need, but not take away from where another one that can, can fill in because we're trying to maximize on production. All right. Now tell me, um, a young agri student from UG, what was the driving factor for you to actually take this up as a career to learn more, educate yourself about agriculture? Because I've always been intrigued of the pivotal role in which agriculture plays as when it comes to feeding the population and food security and the development technology and innovative ways in which we can grow food and provide as a whole to the population. Okay. Now, um, share your personal thoughts on this initiative by government. Um, something like this has not been done before. I spoke with the CEO of NARI earlier and he, was, he said in his time uh, coming out of UG, he wished he had a project like this that he could work on. You are now working on your degree or your master's or whatever it is. How do you feel about having something like this that you can actually leave UG and come and establish and put out what you've learned? I am very excited and motivated because, as he has said, as the CEO has said, um, it's the kind of first of its kind and this would facilitate us agri-trained personnel to now be practical and contribute to the production of food. Um, in this case, it's producing high value crops, which would in turn reduce the amount of importation that we do on these crops. Okay, so Makita, once these shade houses are completed, uh, the broccoli, the cauliflower, and the carrots are done. Tell us a bit about the role of uh, you and your colleagues here after the fact. Okay, um, basically when all the crops would have been placed into the ground or would have been planted, we are basically going to be doing general sanitation and harvesting, which would basically be pulling of weeds, watering and so forth and checking and seeing when exactly we're going to be ready for harvesting because basically um, cauliflower and broccoli takes about 91 days to be harvested so within that time we'll be having regular checks we're going to have um, a, shuttle, a shuttle system some persons are going to come on one day two days just basically to check and to make sure that everything is going as planned So tell me a bit about, you had a passion for agriculture, or have a passion for agriculture. What do you think about this initiative? Um, broccoli, cauliflower and carrots, they're not grown here on a large scale. It's a heavy import bill. You are now part of a team that has an opportunity to uh, alleviate that cost from the country. What do you think about that? Um, with regards to the imports, I. Some time back, I think I would have looked at the bill and I think it was quite hefty. And um, I also thought personally that as Guyana, um, being known as the breadbasket of the Caribbean in the past, we could have done better. And um, when I heard about this project, I thought to myself, wow, that was, you know, it was perfect timing. And um, it also coincided with persons who would have been studying and they didn't have jobs so it, it was a perfect blend to create this project and to knock out two birds with one stone and so um, with regards to the alleviation of that bill I think this project is excellent for that and this is just the starting um, as you could see two more um, shade houses are going up and we would really need a lot of persons to 
manage this entire project. So um, cauliflower, broccoli, and carrots, they're pricey as we know it. And we, we should know because of the bill. And um, I think we would be making back a lot of money that we would have been spending in the past, which should help us a lot going forward. I'm now here with Wilmot Garnett, the Eco Country Rep, who will be offering support to this very innovative program. So tell us a bit about the role Eco would be playing with this project. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, Eco over the years has been working very closely with NARI in what we call the Improved Shade House Technology. And so I must start by congratulating the Ministry of Agriculture for this uh, very important project, which is very inclusive, meaning that it's not only the agriculturists, but it's the general public, as uh, the CEO has mentioned. From ECA standpoint, over the years, we've been working with different models. So we're very pleased that this facility here will demonstrate to Guyana, uh, and certainly the world, uh, the different models that we can use because agriculture for agriculture to develop and as the country continue to modernize the agriculture sector, we need to ensure that we use science, we use technology. So that's a very important area. And uh, so from ECA standpoint also, agriculture is a business. We need to be very clear that agriculture is a business. And so the training, congratulations to the minister, as I said, and uh, certainly the president office and everyone that is involved. ECA is very pleased. Uh, some of the support that we'll be giving is one, we need to ensure that the plan is long term. And so we're working these days over the weekend and by Monday we'll have something for the CU that will be a long term plan. It's always with a plan and in agriculture you've got to think long term. Secondly, we've got to look at, it's a business. So we've got to look at the numbers, what the investment is here, what are the returns, okay? How many crops, what different crops, the priority, broccoli, cauliflower, carrot, but there's all the other crops that we can use that have demonstrated over the years in Guyana, uh, very beneficial in terms of quality, in terms of nutrition, because as we always say in Ica, it's not only producing food, but it's safe and nutritious food. I'm here talking with Mr. Jagnarain Singh, the CEO of NARI. Now, Mr. Singh, uh, the president is pushing this One Guyana Agricultural Innovation and Entrepreneurial Program. The first 25 shade houses will be built here at the demo farm at NARI at Monripo on the East Coast. Tell us a bit about what is going on currently on the ground. Well, thank you very much, and I'm glad to just explain some of the things here. We started off with this concept that the president had and um, we would have developed the, the program to do one shade house. And then eventually we realized that you, you've got a lot of youths who are willing to come on board. And the president would have used that and the initiative of getting them on board. Um, these are students of the University of Guyana who um, may be a little bit academically inclined but eventually we know the agricultural program in many parts of the world, you would got, uh, the farmers are, are highly qualified. So we want to introduce, that, I think that was the concept of not allowing them alone to just go behind the desk, but agriculture is just a lot more of doing and getting the food, getting foods on the table. At the same time, this program is targeting three commodities that are Billions of dollars in, in import cost to Guyana. The broccoli, the cauliflower, and the carrots. Um, if you look in last year, we were imported over 2.5 million kilograms of carrots alone to Guyana. So these are things that um, I guess we're trying to target. This agriculture innovation program for the youth, um, NARI is doing the execution in the building phase. We're going to execute in, in the planting phase. Um, eventually, we hope that the one Guyana company would come on board and take over the management, but we will still continue NARI with the technical and other assistance that we can give to ensure the success of this program, um, the marketing and, and, and the like of all what's happening here. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
In 2018, the import value for carrot, broccoli, and cauliflower was $1.58 billion, while since 2019 and 2021, the import value stood at $1.96 billion and $2.62 billion, respectively. President Ali said those large sums of money could be spent right here.